When we're talking about fatigue, we need to bear in mind there are different kinds of fatigue. Um, the one that comes to mind most readily that we all experience is that when we just do too much, we get tired, we get physically knackered. So there's a physical aspect where the body just can't do things. But with myeloma patients, sometimes it gets to the point where they can hardly live, uh, lift a limb. So this is extreme physical tiredness. There's another kind of fatigue, and that's mental fatigue, where the patients are just feeling mentally tired, they can, they're feeling drowsy, they can hardly struggle to keep up with the conversation. And then there's a third kind of fatigue, a cognitive fatigue, where patients are more uh, not intellectually able to take part in, in life. And that's not just feeling they can be alert, but they're just not tuning into what's going on. Um, now, some of these things can all occur at the same time. Um, or there may be, for instance, physical fatigue may predominate when patients have just had a round of chemotherapy. For instance, they become quite anemic. When we look at the causes, the causes can be because of the disease. So, for instance, being anemic will cause uh, fatigue, so after treatment, uh, as if, if the patient is not having treatment and, the, and the, the blood counts are going down, that will cause physical fatigue. If it goes low enough, it will also cause mental fatigue as well, where patients will feel drowsy as well. Um, sometimes it's complications of myeloma, so for instance hypercalcemia, a, a biochemical complication, will also cause both physical and mental fatigue as well. But we need to remember a very important third class of fatigue, and that's uh, iatrogenic or drug-induced fatigue. Uh, many of the drugs we use in myeloma management or the symptom management of myeloma can cause physical, mental and cognitive fatigue. Opioids are, for instance, one good example. We'll know that they don't cause necessarily physical fatigue, but they will cause mental fatigue, they'll cause drowsiness, they'll cause cognitive fatigue. Patients will feel disconnected, uh, maybe feeling spaced out and just not able to, to take part in, in life. It's important to uh, dig deeper uh, when patients say they're feeling, I'm feeling tired or I'm feeling washed out, you need to know, is it physical tiredness? Is it an actual inability of muscles to move? Is it mental tiredness? In other words, are they just dropping off to sleep very easily? Um, or is it cognitively that they're just not engaging and, and able to participate in, in everyday life? Um, there are rating scales for doing this, but usually those are too complicated, just takes a few minutes to just go a little bit deeper and ask about those three dimensions because they will point you to different treatments. The physical kind of fatigue is sometimes the, the easiest to tackle um, and I always in, in, enlist the help of a physiotherapist in that because physiotherapists are very good at understanding which particular muscles are not working well and how to get people best using their muscles again. We know that when patients are immobilized for any length of time, say during a period of high dose chemotherapy, transplantation or just being laid up in bed because after a chest infection we know that specific muscles, particularly the, 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 the limb gird muscles uh, can be can, can sort of almost atrophy. So patients need uh, education and how to get those muscles going again. They need help in how to sit up, how to, how to transfer and how to take exercise. We know that exercise, exercise now is a very important part of any management regime. When we come to the, the mental kind of fatigue, where patients are feeling drowsy, they're dropping off easily, often you'll notice that because they're falling asleep halfway during a conversation with you, um, it's important then to find out what's causing that. Is it the drugs they're having? Are there, is it opioids? In which case, should we switch the patient from morphine to oxycodone or fentanyl, because we know they cause less fatigue, uh, less uh, drowsiness? Um, is it thalidomide? In which case, we need to think about the, the dosing there. With, with, with that kind of fatigue and with the third kind of fatigue, which is the cognitive, the difficulty engaging, we have another approach. Um, this is the use of psychostimulants. Now, for many years, psychostimulants were regarded as a kind of dark art or sometimes regarded as something not to get involved with because it's addictive drugs like methyl uh, amphetamine. Nowadays, we don't use amphetamine. We use derivatives such as methylphenidate, which are much safer, not addictive and, and very effective. Uh, of course it's important to remember that the, the fatigue may be because of a, of, of a complication like anemia and there either if the patient is not able to have blood transfusions then uh, agents like EPO can be very helpful for them. 
it's important to remember that we shouldn't just be using drug treatments. Um, patients can get sometimes into a vicious cycle where just simple advice and attention to how they organize their lives can be very important. So for instance, a patient that's uh, physically very tired, isn't taking much activity, dropping off to sleep very easily, might find it very easy to, to, to have an excuse to take long naps during the daytime, a long nap in the afternoon. Come bedtime, they're not tired and often then you get a reversal of the day-night patterns. So a very important thing is to say try and concentrate your sleep at night time and if anything shorten or even t don't do, don't take the naps during the daytime. Of course if somebody is extremely tired then they have to rest but then they need to know to rest properly and not rest watching the television because you're not resting then. So go into a quiet room, have a proper rest for 20 minutes, a power nap, that can be much better than sitting around in a room with other people are taking part in conversations and, and watching TV, you're not resting properly then. Of course, if you're feeling tired, it's very easy to use that as an excuse for just sitting down or lying down and not taking any exercise. But what I say to my patients is that's precisely when you have to take exercise. You've got to get into the habit of taking regular exercise to keep the muscles moving, but also then to generate a genuine fatigue where you then can take a proper rest afterwards. In terms of researching fatigue, I think there are two main, two main issues. The first is, which patients are likely to develop fatigue? Can we, can we predict the patients so that we can initiate a course of action beforehand, whether it's physical fatigue or, or, or mental fatigue? Um, the second issue is, what are the best treatments? Now, um, there are treatments like methylphenidate and modafinil, but they're not very well known, and they do carry some toxicities, like all treatments. We need to have better ways of stimulating patients, stimulating them, them mentally, so that we don't have to use, necessarily, drugs which can cause problems. I think the, the future of fatigue man management is going to be very complex. It's got to consist of ways of reducing or eliminating the causes of fatigue. It's got to be ways of instructing patients to make the best of the, their physical and mental abilities. But it's also got to be ways of getting better drug treatments for sharpening up mental processes. Uh, that's going to be the difficult one to crack. <laughs>